What happens when a healer turns harmer? Dr. Kermit Gosnell's story is a dark journey into the heart of a medical nightmare. Once a respected physician in Philadelphia, Gosnell operated what was outwardly a medical clinic offering abortions among other services. Beneath this facade, however, lay a horrifying reality that would shock the nation. As investigations peeled back layers of deceit, the extent of Gosnell's crimes came to light, revealing a chilling transition from a medical professional to a criminal mastermind. This true crime story unfolds a tale of betrayal, where the trust placed in a caregiver was shattered by acts most foul. The unraveling of Gosnell's clinic brought to the forefront not only the individual atrocities committed within its walls but also the systemic failures that allowed such horrors to persist unnoticed. Join us as we delve into the investigation that exposed the grim underbelly of a clinic that was once a place of refuge but became a scene of unspeakable crimes. Kermit Baron Gosnell's story begins in Philadelphia, where he was born into an African-American family, the son of a gas station operator and a government clerk. His academic prowess shone early, heralding a promising career as he emerged as a top student from the city's central high school. Gosnell's journey in medicine started at Dickinson College in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, where he earned his bachelor's degree, laying the groundwork for his future in healthcare. His medical aspirations took flight at Jefferson Medical School, where he received his medical degree in 1966, a time when the winds of change were sweeping through America, including the realms of civil rights and healthcare. Gosnell's early career was marked by a commitment to serving the underprivileged. He established the Mantua Halfway House, a rehabilitation clinic for drug addicts in the impoverished Mantua neighborhood, not far from where he grew up. His dedication also extended to the youth, evidenced by his involvement in a teen aid program. Gosnell became an early advocate for abortion rights, a stance that positioned him as a controversial figure amidst the turbulent social changes of the 1960s and 1970s. In 1972, Gosnell's commitment to providing abortion services led him to open an abortion clinic on Lancaster Avenue in Mantua. The same year saw him perform televised second trimester abortions using an experimental method, which led to significant complications for many women involved. This event, infamously dubbed the Mother's Day Massacre, hinted at the troubling path his career would eventually take. Despite these early warning signs, Gosnell was respected in his community, even becoming a finalist for the Junior Chamber of Commerce's Young Philadelphian of the Year for his work with the Mantua Halfway House. However, by the late 1980s, the facade began to crumble as state tax liens piled up against his operations, revealing a darker side to his professional undertakings. Gosnell's personal life was as complex as his professional one, with three marriages and a large family. His third wife, Pearl, who worked at the Women's Medical Society, became entwined in the web of legal and ethical issues that would eventually surround the clinic. Media portrayals of Gosnell varied widely, from a community hero to a villain operating what was essentially an abortion mill, where legal late-term procedures and unsanitary conditions were rampant. This chapter of Gosnell's life paints a picture of a man who began with seemingly noble intentions, only to veer off into a trajectory that would lead to unimaginable horrors. His early achievements and contributions to the community stand in stark contrast to the atrocities that later unfolded within the walls of his clinic, marking a descent from a promising medical career to the depths of criminal infamy. The true nature of Kermit Gosnell's operations began to unravel in February 2010, not through routine medical oversight, but rather due to suspicions of illegal prescription drug activity. What was supposed to be a crackdown on prescription fraud at the Women's Medical Society Clinic in Philadelphia unexpectedly exposed a chamber of horrors that would shock the nation. Investigators from the FBI and state police entered the clinic under the pretext of a drug raid. They expected to find evidence of prescription drug abuse. Instead, they stumbled upon a scene that one could scarcely imagine in a medical facility. The conditions were appalling, blood-stained furniture, unsterilized medical instruments, and the stench of urine filled the air. Cats roamed freely, their feces mingling with the filth that coated the floors. Semi-conscious women, heavily sedated by unlicensed staff, were scattered across blood-stained recliners, awaiting procedures from a doctor who was seldom present. The clinic, 
which had not been inspected since 1993 despite numerous complaints and malpractice claims, was a grotesque parody of a healthcare facility. In one chilling discovery, jars containing fetal remains were found lining the hallways, a macabre collection that underscored the clinic's utter disregard for life and medical ethics. As the investigation unfolded, it became evident that Gosnell's clinic was not merely a poorly run medical facility, but a site of serial infanticide. Testimonies from former employees painted a horrifying picture of routine late-term abortions, many performed well beyond Pennsylvania's 24-week limit. Babies born alive were subjected to unimaginable cruelty, their spinal cords snipped with scissors in a brutal act of murder. The gruesome practices were not limited to the unborn. Karnamaya Mangar, a 41-year-old refugee and one of Gosnell's patients, died following an abortion procedure at the clinic. Overdosed with anesthetics by untrained staff, her death highlighted the reckless endangerment of patients' lives under Gosnell's watch. As the grand jury assembled to investigate the depths of the clinic's malpractices, the scope of Gosnell's crimes began to crystallize. Charges were levied not just for the murders of newborns but also for the myriad ways in which the clinic had endangered and exploited women, many of whom were vulnerable due to their socioeconomic status or lack of alternative health care options. The public outcry was immediate and intense. Advocates from both sides of the abortion debate were appalled by the revelations, with the case igniting fierce discussions about regulatory oversight, women's health care, and the moral responsibilities of medical practitioners. The grand jury's report, a damning indictment of Gosnell and his clinic, laid bare a systemic failure that allowed such atrocities to continue unchecked for years. It wasn't just the act of a rogue practitioner, but a glaring oversight by health and regulatory bodies that failed to heed numerous red flags over the years. The discovery of crimes at the Women's Medical Society Clinic is a dark chapter in the annals of American healthcare, serving as a stark reminder of the consequences of regulatory neglect and the importance of ethical vigilance in the medical profession. The horrors uncovered in that unassuming brick building in Philadelphia would lead to a reckoning, forcing a reevaluation of abortion clinic regulations and healthcare oversight across the United States. The legal proceedings against Kermit Gosnell and his clinic staff marked a pivotal chapter in this harrowing saga. As the case moved to trial, the courtroom became the stage for unfolding the gruesome reality that had lurked behind the doors of the Women's Medical Society Clinic. The trial, which began in March 2013, drew attention from across the nation, spotlighting the intersection of medical ethics, legal accountability, and women's health rights. Gosnell faced multiple charges, including the murder of four infants and the involuntary manslaughter of Karnamaya Mangar, alongside numerous counts related to the illegal late-term abortions and the reckless endangerment of his patients. From the outset, the prosecution presented a compelling case, fortified by harrowing testimonies from former clinic employees and expert witnesses. They painted a picture of a clinic in chaos, where unlicensed staff performed complex medical procedures and where the value of human life was egregiously disregarded. One of the most damning pieces of evidence was the testimony regarding the so-called snipping practice, where babies born alive during abortion procedures were brutally killed. The jurors were confronted with graphic descriptions and, in some instances, photographic evidence that left no room for doubt about the inhumanity of the acts committed within the clinic's walls. The defense, led by Gosnell's attorney, argued that the babies were not born alive and that Gosnell was merely performing services for women in desperate situations. They painted Gosnell as a community servant, a narrative starkly at odds with the evidence laid out by the prosecution. As the trial progressed, the emotional toll on everyone involved became increasingly evident. Jurors were subjected to disturbing images and testimonies, a stark reminder of the real-world implications of the legal proceedings. The trial not only questioned Gosnell's actions but also the broader failures that allowed such a clinic to operate unchecked for years. Gosnell's demeanor throughout the trial was one of detachment, often described as unemotional or aloof, further alienating him from the jury and the public. His lack of remorse and failure to take responsibility for his actions underscored the prosecution's portrayal of a man who had grossly violated his oath as a physician. 
the defense's strategy of questioning the viability of the infants and suggesting that Mongar's death was due to unforeseen medical complications failed to sway the jury. The overwhelming evidence of systemic malpractice and the callous disregard for both patient and infant life painted a clear picture of guilt. After weeks of testimony, the jury deliberated for ten days, reflecting the case's complexity and the weight of the decision on their shoulders. The verdict was a decisive moment, not just for the case but for the broader discourse on abortion and medical ethics. The conviction of Kermit Gosnell marked a pivotal moment in a case that had captivated and horrified the nation. Found guilty of three counts of first-degree murder for the deaths of newborns, involuntary manslaughter in the death of Karnamaya Mangar, and a slew of other charges, the verdict brought a sense of justice, albeit tainted by the gravity of Gosnell's crimes. The sentencing phase was a formality, given Gosnell's decision to waive his right to appeal in exchange for avoiding the death penalty. This deal ensured that Gosnell would spend the rest of his life in prison without the possibility of parole, a fate that many considered fitting given the nature of his crimes. The judge sentenced Gosnell to life imprisonment for the three counts of first-degree murder, alongside concurrent sentences for the numerous other charges, including the involuntary manslaughter of Mangar. Gosnell's malpractices extended beyond the gruesome snippings that had shocked the courtroom. Testimonies revealed a litany of medical malfeasances, including the gross misuse of ultrasound technology. Gosnell and his unqualified staff manipulated ultrasound readings to produce younger fetal ages, enabling the clinic to perform illegal late-term abortions under the guise of legality. This deceit not only endangered the lives of the women but also led to the birth and subsequent murder of viable infants. The use of unsterilized instruments, and the reuse of disposable medical equipment were among the other egregious violations of medical standards detailed during the trial. These practices exposed patients to severe infections and complications, further illustrating the clinic's complete disregard for patient care and safety. In the aftermath of the sentencing, Gosnell remained a figure of infamy, a physician who had grossly betrayed the trust placed in him. His conviction and life sentence closed a dark chapter in Philadelphia's history leaving a legacy of pain, loss, and a fervent hope for accountability and reform in the healthcare system. The case became a catalyst for change, with advocates on all sides of the abortion debate calling for stricter clinic regulations and enhanced patient safety measures. In the aftermath, Gosnell's name became synonymous with the darkest aspects of medical neglect, serving as a somber reminder of the paramount importance of ethical medical conduct and vigilant oversight. The legacy of the case endures as a cautionary tale, prompting ongoing discussions about the balance between patient rights and the need for robust regulatory frameworks to protect the most vulnerable in society. Don't hesitate to let me know your thoughts about this story in the comments section, and please to like and subscribe, this will help my channel to grow. Thank you for watching.